So, it is nice to be back. I've been fighting the allergy flu, or allergy, uh, whatever the pollen nonsense is, for the last week or so, and I finally felt like getting my ass back on stream, so here I am. And today, uh, I was hanging out earlier in Robert Table's channel. Uh, awesome stuff, he's been working on a bot um, but today I also needed to get some stuff done around, um, a talk I got coming up at, uh, DevOps Day Vancouver. So I'm going to be going up from Seattle to Vancouver and giving a talk on various things related to, uh, database stuff, database reliability, database, uh, data munging, ETL, you name it, kind of all over the board, uh, with a focus on the reliability aspect, but a lot of things like Anyway, uh, I'm not going to like completely splurge out everything that I'm doing for that, but it'll definitely include some schema migrations that I've been working on here on the stream. And today, one of the things I want to do is get into some data modeling which we will actually do next here um, so kind of got tunes going on in the background so we'll, we'll start taking a look here uh, I just installed Firefox and Opera for browsing capabilities on my other machine because uh, one of the crazy ass things that's been going on with Chrome and Chromium is it's been crashing a lot. It's become unstable lately, and there's just some weird stuff going on. So I, I loaded Firefox, which seems to be like the rogue rebel browser these days. Um, and and it's, it's pretty solid still. It's way faster than it used to be. Uh, I'm really looking forward to using it more, getting it also synchronized and stuff, because right now it's like in this weird limbo state. But um let's see if we can get we can get into Google Docs. So with the data modeling, I'm gonna use some of this data modeling stuff. I don't know I'm gonna do this. Which gives me the opportunity to use my transition screen. Please hold while I log in. there. Almost there. I just logged into this and it just popped up and said download Firefox and I'm in Firefox which is really weird I don't know what just happened that was super weird uh, but anyway so I'm gonna get out here and we're gonna take a look at some of the options to do data modeling right because that's what we need to do and oh my god my stupid background thing here come on green screen 
be green and do your thing. That doesn't work. What? Oh. <laughs> the technical difficulties of the world. There we go. All right. So, yeah, anyway. I also fixed my font to an awesome font up here, as you can see. My Drive, Google Drive. Okay, anyway, back to what I was after, though. So what I want to do is use one of these Google tools. I think Draw.io has got some good stuff. So we're going to jump into here. And I don't know if you can use this with most accounts these days because... Google has that whole, like, you got to be signed up for enterprise crap going on or whatever it's called these days. But it, it, anyway, I'm kind of grandfathered in under the been using this stuff forever time frame. So here's some stuff we can use, and it's freaking hard to see. So let's take a look at what some of these draw.io options are. So this, that looks like a table. That looks like a relational table. And we're just going to start with some basic data relational table drawing. So it looks like every one of these, except maybe this one and maybe this one, are relational maps. So anyway, let's let's start with this with the nice blue. Oh yeah, that does look good. So we got bunch of junk in here so what is this object okay that's that one heading is it this thing where do they get the options the the objects i mean vertical layout uml i don't want all the uml crap more shapes oh let's see here you know what let's start from a root i don't want to do this and how do they they don't have the keys designated. I want to designate the key, like primary key and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, okay, well, let's go back to there. Let's go back out here. Ah, I don't want a folder. Come on, stop messing around. There we go. And we got try yeah, go back into draw.io. And then yeah, let's just do a blank diagram. And we're gonna call this uh, what do we call it? Oh, consist tracker, consist database. <laughs> For obvious sake, right? Because it's gonna be of a database. Alright, now we're in here. And then let's see here. I don't really want that. I don't want, the, I guess scratch pad would be good. What is this? Oh, that's some weird stuff. Um, gateways, vents, arrows. Nope, don't want arrows either. I guess I don't want flowchart, arrows, basic, general. Just don't care. Entity relation, yes. UML, I don't want that crap either. Entity relation. Oh yeah, this looks good. Okay, yeah, PK, PK unique ID. This looks like all the stuff. What else do we got in here though? So sitemap, networking stuff, BP, yeah, I don't want that stuff. Lean mapping? Okay, not getting distracted. So I think that's all I need, really. I wonder, now that I'm in here, I'm wondering about audio because I wanted to do an audio one too. But right now we're just going to do entity relationship stuff. So let's do entity relation. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. This is perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Okay. So entity. 
Oh, it's got this and then entities, like the entities that you draw on top of this stuff. I am in, yeah, draw, draw.io. Draw.io is not, so it's in Google Docs, but I don't think it's, it's not like owned by Google, right? Um, they haven't, they haven't bought it, unlike everything else they seem to buy up at some point or another. So that's cool. It's cool that they haven't bought it up. Um, but yeah, I haven't really looked at the company or anything. Let's, let's go do that real quick just to check it out and see what the dealio is with it. Oh, whoa, I didn't want to go directly into the thing. How about draw.io.com? It's probably a completely different website. Pricing, support, pricing, about us. High quality diagramming software for everyone. So yeah, I think it's it's independent, right? Um, oh, UK based, that's pretty cool. Features, pricing, I don't even know what pricing is. Oh, you can, yeah, so you see, you can also get it in Jira and Confluence. I've actually seen it in there, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, that's 10 users, 10 bucks. Wow, that doesn't seem like very much, actually. Uh, and then Confluence Data Center, Confluence Cloud, Jira Server. That's pretty slick. So basically, it's a web-based thing that's available in... Uh, Google Docs, it's available in Confluence, Jira, and I would suspect that you could probably even get it integrated into other things, you know, pending. Oh, that's a nice looking diagram. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. Okay, so with that done and figured out, let's get started. All right, so what I'm doing is working off that idea that I have talked about in the past for a quick recap though. Um, it's about trains because trains are freaking rad. So speaking of that, one of the things I want to first tackle is uh, basically how to put together a train for passenger consist. So a train, look at that real quick, train consist. And then let's actually look at, we just looked at UK. So train sets, let's see if what we get here. Uh, I don't want... Uh, Yeah, that'll show us some stuff. Yeah, so a consist is basically uh, what what cars are brought together or what train sets, like full train sets, are brought together to make up a particular train that you would take to go somewhere or uh, like a freight train would be if the consist is like a mixed consist. So it would have maybe everything from garbage to electronics to uh grain whatever and then they also have these like main uh just run it. oh wow google has interesting results i wonder what the hell i've been looking up but uh so a freight consist can also be what they call a um i've just spaced on it now damn it but basically a, a single type of train freight train that carries one type of thing and it's just huge and it's a bunch of cars of the same type like an oil train or a container train, like a ship comes in with all those containers on it, uh, which is kind of familiar for techies these days because of Docker. But basically all those containers come in and they take those off and they load them on particular trains or on, directly onto trucks and then they ship them out. So anyway, that's, that's what I'm trying to do is I wanna build a database that will store the daily consists of trains, uh, cargo containers, whatever it is, um, that kind of stuff. New, neck, new. Yes. So, yeah, America is heavy on the coal train still. Um, I look forward to the day when we don't really have coal trains, but hey, here we are. Uh, same thing with oil trains, kind of problematic. A lot of crap flies off of those oil, uh, coal trains, which is not, like, don't breathe that shit. It will kill you um, or give you black lung. You're not even a coal miner. You get black lung if you live too close to the tracks. And then the oil trains tend to... Uh, they crash and blow up every once in a while, which is very bad. However, I would say, 
hats off to the train crews. They uh, have made them a little bit safer. Uh, and also they spill dramatically less oil than pipelines, which is kind of remarkable when you think about it. But a pipeline tends to just leak all the time a little bit. And then they break and oil dumps everywhere. It's like the freaking uh, Valdez incident, except that was a tanker and it just crashed and dumped it all out of the sea. Quite horrible stuff. But trains also carry a lot of other things, too, that are catastrophically horrible, like uh, grain for food for the world. Uh, and they do it super, super cheap, at least in the U.S. It's like one-tenth the cost of freight trains in Europe. It, it's, it's pretty awesome. But then, of course, Europe carries a billion people a freaking day on all their trains, and we carry, like, less than one line in freaking London or whatever. It's, it's nuts. So... All types of different trains, all types of different places. All of them have something in common. They have a consist that is made up of whatever it is that they're carrying. So with a passenger train, it's often like, like it says right here, um, it's made up of some passenger cars, but also usually like, uh, used to be, they would have coffee cars. Nowadays they have usually like a lounge car, dining car, or a bistro car, or something like that. So you have different options of like, when, when you walk around the train, where you can sit and eat or whatever you got to do. Um, ba, ba, ba. And it's a Latin word, der, like everything in English practically. Okay, so here's here's some good consist. Oh, geez, I was going to start with European stuff, but this looks like a million and one different trains. You get the idea though. These are these are basically made up of different cars here, but it looks like they're probably brought together as a single consist. And then, uh, yeah, this is like what? One, two, three, four cars. So probably at least 100 something people on there. Pretty decent. But let's look, since, since I'm in America, I'm gonna look at some American trains. Um, and also, turn my tickets here. Of course, we have one nationalized system pretty much. And then we have, let's see what else is it? Um, Oh geez, what a title. Oh man, talk about editorial leeway there. I'm curious about that. So anyway, we'll call them, we'll call it Virgin Bright Lines. So these are the trains down in Florida, first private operation in a long, long, long time. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. We'll, let's make a table for them. Let's say Call this a carry carry. Let's call this carrier ID. Let's say name. Description. Life. Uh, let's say start. Let's go with inception date. this bigger so, but now I think I can do this but now I should do that I don't know what is this thing is it's just I guess that's just the box alright that's cool let's do this, this so basically this carrier ID would be bright line Amtrak, uh, Alaska, Amtrak, let's do this, let's say Amtrak, let's do PDF, so we'll get the main ones here, and then Alaska, 
Basically, it's, I want to make a database that would store and track all the trains traveling to and fro anywhere in the United States. Uh, you know, kind of a theoretical thing, but, you know, we could technically track all these things. Um, we know their movements. Most of the railroads make their movements public and just track their consists, capabilities, stuff like that. So, okay, I this so we can hide down this on large speakers. This playlist, I don't know, because I'll, I'll show you exactly why. Um, as you can see here, so there's some of the up there. Silent Partner, Joe's on Fire. That came from my YouTube audio library. Um, I'm not super familiar how to get that posted up on something on stream. I am, however, planning to switch to a, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. What is the audio? Um, I'm trying to switch to another audio source or another audio streaming thing. Um, like, let's see here. www.github. www.github.com. Catering slash so in this repo, down here in music, this is, oh, Pretzel Rocks. That's what I need to get going. And I just haven't done it quite yet. Uh, because that'll post up on the stream, right? It'll show who, who wrote the music and everything. And being a musician myself, I definitely like it when people... Oh, this, um, I like it when people, you know, give a shout out to stuff I've done. Um, so I definitely want to do that for people. And I want to make sure that I'm not using stuff in ways that musicians wouldn't see. Right? Oops. Back of the drum. So the, the best thing really is to go check out uh, that particular um, that repo and check out the options in there, right? Because that's where most of this music is all derived from, and some YouTube stuff. All right, so let's hear. Oh, yeah, nice looking. So Alaska Railroad is also one of the U.S. trains. Um, and I think that's I think that's about all for our system. Let me get back into the right screen here. Um, okay, so that's the main one. I want to do. Is there a website here? On it? Yeah, go right. And we'll do this one. Let's do Amtrak Wikipedia. And then, of course, Amtrak.com. Yeah. Okay. So that's basically our options here in the United States. Yeah. All right. Some of the notes. So in those, we want to have, what's your inception? Um, let's say, uh, what's, what is it when a company stops, not closes, but uh, end service, service end, service end. Oh, let's do that. Let's say service end, service start. Yeah. And then. Or wait, we should do start, start, and 
in. Okay, then let's do a site or website. And then look at PDF. So that's something that we'll do for each one. Okay, and I'm gonna move that back like so. And that's carried. Okay, and it saves. And let's just do we actually ah oh, sweet, okay. So there's that, and then let's add. Hmm. Oh, and this, let's see our primary. Let's do this. Let's, there we go. Uh, should we list like primary operations or not? Because the like, Amtrak is primary operator is passenger, but Alaska is freight distinctively and also passenger. And Brightline is primarily passenger, but really it's a real estate company. So kind of weird, right? Um, not overly clear what those entities are. Hmm. So yeah, I guess we don't really want to do that. I don't know. We'll add some more stuff in the future. So, oops. That there, we go. And then we're gonna bring up another one in here. Thank you. Oh, neat. Okay, so that's for like a mini to mini. Then we'll do. You might want to do mini to mini or one to mini for carriers and then their trains. So what I'm gonna need to do is have like. Something like that, and then we have to do consist. So there's trains, which would be like the Coast Starlight. That's an Amtrak train that runs from Seattle to LA every day, departs uh, from either or location, has one going both ways. Uh, it takes about 36 hours, blah, 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 blah. But, so, the consist could change, technically, for each each train. So also the train might be something like uh, freight train 15931 going Denver to something, or Seattle to Denver, let's say. It's loading a, it's a container train and for Denver. So that's all great, but uh, the consist definitely changes. So it might be a specific train designator, designation, but then it would have a consist that would always be different, and then it would maybe have like a specific, uh, you know, uh, makeup or something that would need to be identified. So let's see, we're going to have the trains, and then, let's see, how do we do this? Okay. Oh, that's cool. Here, and then this will be carrier ID. And here we'll talk about. Okay, let me get into this for a second. The reason I'm talking about doing a one, one to many, many to one, so ID and many to many relationship here, um, is for the following reason. A carrier may have a train. And that train would belong to the carrier, but there may be a train that also belongs to another carrier. So let's say uh, back in the day, it used to be more common, where let's say one one railroad would begin a passenger train from New York to uh, let's say Chicago, right? 
And what would happen is it would depart with certain engines, like New York Central engines and New York Central equipment. But then part of the way through, uh, let's say in like, I don't know, Pittsburgh or something, right? Or Cincinnati, another railroad would meet it there. And then those cars with those passengers would be attached to that train to continue onward into Chicago. So it could be like a, a connection um, where you don't actually have to get off. It's kind of the cool thing about how they used to do some of the train services. Even though you have a connecting uh, train, you don't have to get off the train. They'll just connect your cars and then you'll go on to wherever it is that you're going. Um, but it would be two railroads or two carriers that this would be done for. Just like often with freight in the United States, one of the things that will happen is a freight provider, freight carrier, will begin a service, but then it'll pick up cars on another railroad system sometimes. And they'll have these agreements where they can do that. So even though probably like 99% of the trains would be a carrier to many trains sometimes a carrier may have a train that also belongs to another carrier so it's got to go both ways right does that make sense uh try not to say that it makes sense obviously you listen to me if you listen to me unless i'm just crazy but ask questions if i'm doing anything that sounds ridiculous okay I'm trying to make this logical. Alright, so the train here. The name, train name. Description. Uh, what is it? Uh, So a multimodal train is one with containers, right? So let's see what we actually get here. Multimodal transport. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so containers go from ship, train, to truck. Okay, pretty straightforward. Oh, well, here's the <laughs> old days, stagecoach to a train. Um, yeah, so instead of having to like offload things, you can just put it in a container, and the container is what goes the whole thing, right? Uh, the largest facility, I believe, is this one in Long Beach, California. It's it's just crazy how many. They do like 100 and something trains a day here, which is basically like having a six lane interstate in, six lane interstate out of trucks. Some crazy number like that. Oh, yeah, there you go. Containers in, containers shipped out. These are the big intermodal points. Is basically everything comes in real life. It's nuts. Uh, and there's the containers. That's the idea of the multi. Um, uh, here, let's do a. Oh, whoops. I don't know what I just did. Now I messed something up. It's, how do I. There's that little tab there. Make it bigger. Next one in there would be, let's do a start and end service. So that would be the calendar date when a particular train starts service and end service. Okay, like if it gets cut, it would have an end date. Otherwise, it won't have an end date. So that would be a nullable field, for example. Um, multimodal would be yes, no. Like, is it, is it multimodal? Is it not multimodal? Let's see here. Okay. Oh, let's do let's do this. Let's do origin. Yes, the nation. I think that would be workable stuff. 
Let's actually do it this So what I'm trying to do is get an origin and destination on there, but let's make it the keys. Uh, like, let's get another table in here. Let's just call it this uh, a depot. Okay. Depot ID name. now you still hear the music and you know voice so my mic ain't, ain't exactly up all the way either let me fix that let's see if I'm fixing that input mic is up the voice didn't just become scratchy or anything, did it? Because sometimes when I turn the mic all the way up, it goes all crazy into overdrive. And I don't want that to happen. Cool. All right. Yeah, I think I got my voice up a little bit too. It looks like, uh, yeah, because I just hit peak on the monitor a little bit. All right, that's good. All right, so we got that stuff in there. Oh yeah, depots, and then what I wanted to add is, like relate this to, Yeah, some of the music is just recorded louder too. It's kind of annoying. Um, need a thing that like would know how to discern uh, volume levels and stuff. All right, so let's see here. How do we, can I move this over here? Does it make my screen? Ah, cool. Okay. Definitely wanted to do that. Here's depots. Ah, and then let's do that info ID, and then let's do this origin ID, destination ID, and then I want to do a mini to mini like this. Let's 
Move, move everything down. Come on, move everything down. Oh, there we go. Okay. A little weird, but this app is pretty good. I'd have to give it a, a, a thumbs up vote. Um, Alright, so. What I'm going to do here is call this. Uh, let's call it. Stops. Stops. ID. Right? Uh, actually, maybe I should call it time points. Okay, trip. Stops. I'm just going to call it stops for now. So this would be like the stops along the way, right? So let's go with depot ID. Oops. And then we'll do stop ID like that. Oops. All right. <clears throat> then so let's leave back out here. And let's go with this one. This is going to be the stop ID. No, wait, I don't need. I need this one to go here. Related to the depot ID. And then we got the stop ID related to stop ID here. Wait, is that right? Did I just do it backwards? So, yeah, depot ID can have, be listed multiple times here. And then the stop. No, I just want, whoops, yeah, I did do it backwards. Can I do this? Yeah, there we go. All right, that, and here, and here. There we go, fixed itself. So basically, then I can have a stop ID listed multiple times with the depot. So they'd have to be different, but that way I could list out like stop X, Y, Z and have a whole bunch of them, right? So another use for a mini to mini table. Meanwhile, there's only one origin and there's only one destination. But because multiple trains may originate and de destinate in uh, the same place, of course, it would be one depot only exists, but there may be many listed here because of the train ID being, you know, the have multiple origins and destinations because of multiple trains that originate and destinate in those places. All right. So now let's get into the concepts. This is where we get into some meaty stuff. Oh, but let's stop. Should we have any information about the stops? Oh, arrive, arrival. Oops. I wonder how I can I add it. Ah, there we go. Cool. And then departure. Boom, arrival and departure. So a train can arrive at a particular time and then depart several minutes afterwards or something like that, depending on what's going on. For instance, like when the Empire Builder departs Seattle and the Empire Builder departs Portland at relatively the same time, around 4, 45, 4, 50 p.m., it continues to travel eastward. And then once both of those trains arrive in Spokane, Washington, they actually are disconnected respectively from their engines or one of them is from their engines. And then both engines connect and both of the train set consists connect. And then it leaves there as one train versus two trains onward to Chicago. And that's about a 45 minute stop or 45 minute layover, however you want to put it. So the arrival and departure would be key for listing out a schedule for that. Um, and stops can be used to basically define and build a schedule in the database, that is, right? So now let's look at consists because these database tables that we have so far um, give us the capabilities around several, to be able to do several different things, right? So we now have the ability to uh, list out carriers, list out trains, and list out depots. And we can list out trains based on their stops, providing the ability to create, store, and retrieve schedules for a particular train. And then we can also list out trains per carrier, things like that. So we've got a, a good bit of functional uh, structure that we can use to collect this data and then pull it back out in useful ways to be able to you know, run our train company or whatever we're doing with these things. So, but now let's get into Actually, building a consist. 
Oh, water. Um, so we're gonna build a consist now. And consist, as I was saying earlier, is basically what makes up the particular train post engine and or what is permanently connected to the engine because you know since we're since we're going over all of this jazz let's actually talk about that just a little bit sometimes like let's say tgv consist sometimes a train is made up of one big old thing right like this is a whole train they don't really take these cars apart they're connected at the center kind of permanently we have a few of these in the united states like let's take for instance the uh, amtrak cascades right um this is what they look like oops what did i just click on oh there we go so if you see this car is connected to that car, connected to that car, connected to that car, and they're permanently connected. Um, they don't disconnect, they don't have couplers in between, they're like permanently attached. Uh, it's the same as the trains over on the east coast called the Acela, right? Amtrak, it's Acela. Now when we talk about the consist of these trains, um, they also have X number of cars, however, the cars are separated on these, so actually that's not the best example. Um, eh, it's, it's still a pretty good example. So it shows you how the different makeup can be. Like a consist can be one train that's permanently attached together is the point I'm trying to make. Um, yeah, really the, the Talgo is a better example here. But the engine here is on the back, and this is not actually an engine, it's called a cabbage car, or a cabbage engine, cab. Uh, so the driver can sit up here, if it, see this train is actually going away from us, you can tell, because there's no driver in here. If it was coming toward us, we'd have a driver in here, and this car has an electrical system that attaches to the train, then goes through the train, connects it to the engine back there, so that the driver can sit up here and control the engine on the rear of the train, and drive it forward from that perspective. That type of operation where the train is pushed versus pulled um, is what they call push-pull uh, operation. So that's that's what that dealio is. Um, here's another one in Portland of that same train. You can see it's pulling out because here's the driver in this cab car here and then the engine is actually over here on the back sometimes this train set actually has an engine on both sides but I won't get into that here's one this consist has this engine on the front and then you can see the squarey cap car on the back uh, and then here is one of the brand new ones right here connected to the train so we'll get back into that in just a minute let's go ahead and talk about that let's say all right so consist ID train ID and then we need something called let's call it a unit and then we'll actually need a mini to mini for the same reason as what I use this one here for where a train can belong to a carrier and a carrier can belong to a train and vice versa and it can go multiple ways there's not simply one consist and that consist has a car and that car only goes to that consist. It, it can only be in a consist at one time, but since we're talking about scheduling a whole bunch of things, we may need to have it uh, in, in multiple, listed in multiple consists for multiple schedules uh, over, over a particular period, okay? So let's get back into this and we'll get that drawn out. Ooh. All right, so here's a consist. I'm gonna call the different cars uh, units. Oh, actually that's what, when I was thinking of the multimodal trains earlier, a unit train is a train that has one type of uh, cargo, like a coal train or a whatever, right? So, but here I'm gonna, actually we'll do, well, actually let's call it loads. That's more accurate of what it is. Um, 
and we'll do this, we'll call this cars. And this will be passenger. Um, hmm. So there's passenger equipment and then trade equipment. I'm wondering if I should break it out. So I might not need to. But so like we have passen passengers, let's do this passengers. And then we can determine if it's passengers or not. Um, but then you always have passengers listed, even on a freight car. Maybe I should break it out to passenger cars and then freight cars. Just do two different types. I'm not sure, really. Because they, they're very distinctive in what they would have in them, though. Right? And the characteristics that we'd want to measure for them. Hmm. If I did another one though, like let's say we did this, let's say we did freight, we did passenger, passenger cars, freight cars, right? So then how would we do the mini to mini table? That is my question, right? So would it be like, what would it be like? So could I do draw this to this, this to this, and then have them be nullable PK, FK keys? I don't know if that would really work. Hmm. Thoughts? I'm just not sure. Yeah, so PK consist. So this would definitely be, we'll go ahead and draw these out. So this is here. Train ID to train. Yeah, so consist. And So the stops would be trains. The consist would actually have the stops, I bet. Not particularly the individual. The, the train consist could be different from day to day. You'd probably want the, no, that would be historical. So, okay, we, we got this right so far. So here's the consist. And then the loads, put that here. <laughs> Hello, Robert and the crew. Welcome to my stream and to the pit of craziness. So we're talking about all that logistic stuff like I was talking about before and I'm actually having a little bit of a conflict, um, which some of you may be able to assist me with. Maybe. <laughs> Heck ships. Heck ships. Let's ship it. Um, yeah, so I've gotten here where I have carriers, providers, like, say, uh, Alaska Railroad, Amtrak. And I'm kind of building this out thinking from the passenger perspective, but I wanted to add freight. And I got down to the point where I'm trying to model the train's consist. And it's it's uh, gotten a little complicated because here's my dilemma. Um, so this is, the loads is gonna be a mini to mini table, right? So I have passenger cars and freight cars and then, so at that point, I would draw my key here. It would be like this. So this would be, come on, damn it. Um, consist ID. So then I would either have pass, a passenger car ID, and then I'd have, and or a freight car ID, right? But the question is, 
Hey, Pizza Pizza, thanks for the follow. Awesome. Thanks for the bits, Michael Jolly. Stoked for y'all to be here. Feels good to be streaming after like a week of hell from the allergy attacks and allergy fever of the pollen monsters. Um, never something I used to think about when I first moved to Seattle. And now, for some reason, I think about it all the time. Mainly because it kicks my ass. So let's see here. Consist can have lots of loads. And then the load's either going to be a passenger or freight ID type. Or passenger or freight car attached to the engine, right? And I guess that's the other thing. We'd have... I do need to do this in some way, form, or manner. This needs to be engine ID. Engines. Um... Oh! I know what I'm doing wrong. I got it, I got it. So, so here's how I need to do it. I need to do loads. Let's get rid of this, boom. And then we're gonna have a consist ID. Get that one added in here like this. And then what I need to do is actually, boom. Hmm. No, actually, I don't know. If I'm... Oh, yes. I need a mini to mini for it. So we'll do this. Like this. This will be consist ID. And this will be. Yeah, seriously. Allergies are coming. They are here for me. They've already kicked me in the face. So I guess I could say this unit. ID or something like that. And then, see, I don't know if I can actually do this in a, in a database, or depending on the database. I could do it from a organizational topic here. But like, now imagine this, right? So we got one unit to this unit, right? Oh wait, this is load types. Another one in here. This will go here to here. And then this one. Get the space in front of here. All right, so you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. But I don't know if this is going to work. Simply do not know. Right? Oops. Come on, damn it. Wrong. Oh, and I've drawn every one of these backwards. We need like a flip around button. So, default edit data, edit link. No, that's not what I want to do. Edit data. Uh, nope, don't want to do that either. So, let's do this. call this unit ID unit ID it's unit ID so hmm see I just don't know if this would would work right would that work can I do that Because I'm trying to think of the easiest way to break out these differentiators so I don't have redundant empty columns, right? Because um, like a passenger car is not going to need to list what freight contents a freight car has. Freight car doesn't need to list out what the passengers are in a passenger car. Um, load consist loads. It's basically the train in its active state with the multiple loads. Um, at this point, though, I could just get rid of this. Actually, I get rid of loads. 
do this. I don't know why I had that extra table in there. Uh, I'm still torn though. I don't think this is going to be possible. Unless I have three foreign keys here, like this. Um, and then do engine ID. Hmm. Freight ID. And. Like that. Well, we'll do that and we'll see what we get. Let's we'll see what we can do when I get back into the nitty gritty of it all. Come on, Tank. Why are you doing this weird? Oh, let's see why you're doing weird. Oh, or I could do... Hmm. Brake cars and passenger cars are connected to engines. So maybe the engine needs relation to foreign cars, brake cars and passenger cars. Huh? Would that be the thing? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's in the NSYNC song. Totally, totally picking that album up. <laughs> oh, that's good. So I don't know how this is gonna. I don't know. Frustrated with this one. Hmm. So I could do it by. Yeah, they're gonna have to be split out like this. We'll see how it shapes up after we work with it a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then... Yeah, I will do the engine, actually. I think that's the better way to do it. So let's get rid of freight ID, passenger ID, and we'll just call this leader ID. Because the train ain't going anywhere without an engine. And then, this will be... Engine, engine ID, Oops. let's get these other ones in here. There we go, and you can go down here. I got that already. And then let's do freight. ID. Oh shit, I did this wrong. Ah, databases are hard sometimes. Yeah, I need a mini to mini. And I need a mini to mini for each one here. Oh, yeah, so that's what I can do. Okay, this is all starting to work out now. Let's see how this is going to work. Um, Consist freight. Yeah, because then it only exists if, um, yeah, okay. You'll see how this is going to go when I draw this out here in a second. So this can have passenger cars, and this can have, oops, this can have freight cars. Okay. So and then this, do, there we go. There, that'll go there. It'll e then the record will either exist or it will not exist. Plain and simple, nothing crazy complicated there, right? All right, so let's your engines. Let's call this tonnage. Or actually, we'll just say tons. Oh, my tons. Let's just do weight. Uh, traction. Uh, we'll do horsepower. I don't know, something, something like that, right? Um, gym. 
Yeah, so that'd be the consonants based on that. Okay. Yeah. All right, I need a mini to mini table actually, Michael Jolly, for the engines, because there would be, yeah. Power ID actually is what we need. Good call, you totally made me think about that, because often it's not one engine, it's it's a whole set, right? Uh, let's see here, so we got power ID, and then we got engine ID. really need it as a join table in this case. So let's say this. Um, engine, engines, loads. Power, actually. Saying a load is the entire train. Uh, the load Yeah, that's a good question. So it is, yeah, it is the entire train. So like this would go here, uh, and this doesn't need to be here then. So this got way more complicated than I realized it was gonna be. So this is gonna go here. So a load, i.e. part of the load of the train is the engine itself. So I'm calling it part of the load, right? part of the consist really and thus I have the loads as the mini to mini table that's connecting the consist to the multiple uh, engines oh wait no I think I did it right at first because it could have multiple engines because there is multiple power I like this title better though engines power uh, maybe engines is better. Mm. Yeah, because then you could have multiple engines per load. So yeah, that, that did have that taken care of. My bad. Because yeah, see, check it out. So one engine could be on a load, and then another singular engine could be on the load. So then the, the multiple engines would be listed in the loads here but then only one engine is actually connected to all the cars and I can list the cars per that engine, right? Or it can be the designated lead engine. So in that case, what I would need to do is say, lead, that's the lead unit, right? Would be the engine like this. Maybe I should call it leader, leader ID like this. And then leader, ID and in here would be the passenger actually let's call it the car ID and then here we're gonna have the car ID um, or maybe I should leave it as a unit because it is part of a unit yeah let's do that unit ID unit ID. All right. 102 bits. Man, y'all are making me rich. Rich with power. All right, so let's see here. Passengers. Here. Um, weight. Cargo. So weight would be the weight of the car, right? Because one of those cars is like 60 tons or something. And then the cargo would be like another 100 tons or whatever. So there's like, you know, the combination almost doubles once you add the cargo. It's not like uh, some other things where the weight of the vehicle isn't nearly as much as the cargo. So a big differentiation there. It's the difference in load and train. So, okay, so train is like the thing you would see on a schedule, and a consist would be the actual serviceable train, 
the thing that's going to be out there running in that sense that the train a train will be scheduled right so take for instance on the west coast we have a train called the coast starlight it has a consist that's made up of two engines or three engines and like 14 or 15 passenger cars okay so the train itself the coast starlight would be put on a schedule and the time for its stops and all that stuff would be listed out on that schedule and the stops are at various depots right then um oh i just remembered what i wanted to put here let's add owner okay so that that gives us the stops which are depots that have owners and all that designator but it's one to many with a train like multiple trains may go to a singular stop right like for instance uh seattle king street station we got a bunch of different passenger trains that come through here every day uh we got sounder trains we got amtrak cascades and empire uh amtrak empire builder and amtrak coast starlight so three key amtrak trains and sounder commuter trains so four different specific types of scheduled trains in and out every day um See you later, man. Have a good one. Uh, catch you next time. And then we have the trains, like they go on the schedule. And then, of course, the consist, which is what makes up the train engines and the cars that they're pulling. So that's, that's what we got going on there. So now with passenger cars and... Oops, let's see here. Come on. Sync up freight cars. And then we can get the relationships in there for that this and like that let's actually do this offset a little bit just for diagramming purposes all right and then unit ID to unit ID um, let's see your notes let's put that in here Put one in there, consist, let's do that, and then uh, okay, there we go. Alright, I think we're almost to the point where uh, let's see what else. I don't know, I'm sure there's some other stuff to list about the engine, but we're not going to add it right now. We're getting to the point where I want to start building out some of this stuff. Where's my... Here we go. Boom. Passengers and the passenger cars. Weight. Cargo weight. Um, what else do we need here? Oh, type. This would be like sleeper. Sleeper car, passenger car, etc. Uh, description. Oh, um, we also need. Title of the train car. Some of them have unique names. Service start. Build date, which would be the date that it started or was created. Um, the service start, and then we get ends. End one. Oh, I'm starting to get the hang of this one. Service end. We'll have one for scrap too. Scrap date. Okay. Let's actually change this to built. I don't like to put the data type in the name. That just doesn't jive right. Scrap. 
service start, service end. Let's do service begins, ends. Nah, that's good enough for me. Okay, and this one is, let's say, built. So for each of these, we have, oh man, how would that be related actually? So what happens if we want to track revenue and profit on these, right? So these are the singular entities. This is what is kept in the consist. Oh, so this would actually be, um, like, let's see here. Charge. And then charge and cost is what we need to do. See, that's got a lot of redundant stuff there. And it almost makes me wonder. Yeah, I want to kind of do the cost down to the per... I want to do per car, but I don't really want to charge it at... Well, it's not per car. It's per train. I mean, it's per car, but it's per train too. Um, so we're going to leave these in here for now. But I believe this dynamic is going to change. Yeah, so it's here I need to have charge. Whoa. So that's for the whole, the whole train. Which, if we can break it down this way, we will. Otherwise, it'll be attached to that. But I'm thinking like maybe I'm adding too much complication to this right now. Let's let's do this. Let's get that out of there, and let's just get this this much of it built, right? All right. So we made we made some serious progress here. Let's see how we can export this. So draw.io. We can get. Oh, look, some pretty good stuff. I don't know. What's BSDX? Is that the Vizio? Vizio diagram? Um, HTML, XML, URL. So let's do... First off, let's look at this from a... Yeah, I think I could go long ways with this. Get this down here. Right, and then move loads over here. And then engines. That is not what I want to do. Let's get the whole damn thing. There we go. And then. Yeah, okay. So. So, Con says passenger. Freight. Yeah, okay. 
that one over here. And this one. Let's do it this way, actually. Boom. There, now they're kind of lined up per what they're actually related to and everything. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Let's get this saved out to some stuff. Export, PNG, border with no transparent background, selection only, crop, shadow. I guess I'm going to do a copy of my value. Sure, whatever. So that's PNG. Let's put it on the device. Gonna go in downwards. How does that look? Oh, that's kind of bad. Oh, I have text way over there. I don't see the text. Do you see the text? Oh, there it is. Ah, this should be much cleaner now. Okay, let's try that. So export PNG, transparent background, export, device, save as file. All right, then let's do a export JPEG. Yeah, sure, looks groovy. Let's save that, and then let's do a yeah, let's do the SVG too. Transparent background. Dead images. Export. Yeah, that PDF. I don't like to hear about the PDF. Let's take a look at the HTML. It's border color. Good with this. straight out to GitHub from here. That's pretty cool. I am I am attempting to export all the things. I want to make sure I got all the formats. Let's get a PDF because, you know, PDFs. I'm not sure I want to do that in a particular way. All right, so that's our Consys database. Now the question is, is where the hell do we export it to Trello? <laughs> what? Oh, that's, I don't know, I don't even you do that. Oh, open library from, that's what it's saying. Okay. New library, publish, embed. Yeah, that's good. What happens if I close this? Oh, okay, so open system diagram. And I open it again the same way, I guess? Yeah, okay. Cool. Alright. Alright, so we got our database in there. <clears throat> and these are the three. Services. So here, there's our PNG. That looks like that. Let's actually open that with something. Open another application. Yeah, let's look here.
talky stuff. Pictures, screen. Where did I just? They all go to downloads, I guess. Yep. Oh, no, that's not there. I didn't do that. Stop. Where did all this stuff just download? Oh, Joy, Firefox has a common download directory? That's kind of a well, Let's look at this one. I don't really have to look at it that much. Okay, that looks pretty nice. What's that do? Eh, look at that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. What I'm going to do now, put that over here. And let's get back into our... project here with our data schema migrations. Oh. I think it's almost time for an evening round of coffee. What say you? Huh? Yeah, while I wait for that to load, actually, I'm going to show everybody my cool be back in five minutes screen, and I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> we'll take a five minute nap now and I'll see you in five minutes.
Pretty good timing, huh? Right at five minutes. I have gotten down cappuccino making the five minutes. So I am freaking proud of myself. I'm just gonna show you this little gym real quick. Because Yep, Stump Town. Oh yeah, look at that fries. I'll sound like I'm smoking. That was weird. I'm not shilling either. I just honestly, Stumptown kicks ass. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, at least they're logos. I don't actually think Stumptown coffee. <laughs> um. Yeah, this is a uh, Ballard Coffee Works. Ballard Coffee Works beans. Um, it's an African bean. Forget what it is. Completely space out. I got a Guatemalan. It's the, it's the super common African bean. It's really good, but super kick ass. Uh, that's just what I needed to get back into this. All of this crazy database stuff. And all this old storing crap in places, you know? Hmm. I don't have, oh my goodness, I just looked at my list here. All right, Gary, you are auto host, you're on the auto host now. Digital Drubber, you're on the auto host now too. And, ooh, what? Cheek, Cheek C2, CLL. And you to my auto host. Thanks for hosting today. Appreciate that. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. That was, that was just such a rude, rude burp. <clears throat> All right. It's it's delicious, y'all. Delicious. Uh, thanks to my lady for uh, making sure that I learned how to make cappuccinos. She don't even drink the damn thing. But anyway, hey, more for me. <laughs> All right, so in Go Land here, I'm really liking the new title. That's just the better. Yeah, I agree. Total. I mean that plus plus. Uh, if only I could get her to it. I don't think that'll ever happen, but it'd be pretty awesome. Uh, well, somebody's trying to log into my stuff, and my two factors catching me. Good old two factor. All right. So, before the break, we created this database schema thing for a relational database, and we're now going to make the migrations, the data schema migrations we need to uh, actually make sure that these are built and in a database. Let's get this thing going like this. Is that going to show? Yeah, okay. There we go. And we have two databases. We have Cassandra and we have Postgres. Cassandra is a distributed database based on columnar data stores, which we can get into a little bit of that. Um, is the music not louder than my voice now? Because, yeah, somebody mentioned that, but the damn music keeps... Uh, can you hear the music now? Yeah, the music gets louder. It was like getting louder on me, which is super weird. I'm not used to that happening. I added a bunch of stuff to make it better, uh, to be able to have more control over it. And I think in the process of doing that, I added some weird like auto adjustment of the music thing or something. It's kind of, it's stupid. I don't know what the hell the problem is, but. I also can barely code or think without music. I'm just, I go, oh, can't, can't do stuff then, at least not very effectively. All right, so we have our things here split out using the nice little Ubuntu feature there. And I just want to scheme over here just minimally, like that. Okay. And then we're going to scrunch over here a little bit. 
we have the initial inception and destruction of the respective databases in here already. And I have added that right here to up. Uh, this is this this is actually our up migrations, and this is our down migrations. And then I also have the start Docker. And what is it? oh yeah, just start Cassandra. But this is the start the uh, containers for the databases, right? So we have SQL Server, Postgres, and Cassandra. Not using SQL Server right now. Just doing the Postgres and the Cassandra schema migrations. So let's get in here and see what we get going. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have the burps and hiccups now. Excuse me. So, with data schema migrations, everything needs an up and everything needs a down. Right? So you build it up, tear it down, whimsically. That's the whole kind of point of these things. And with our first one here, we got create trains table dot up dot CQL. That's already in the database. Okay. And if I run up, we should get a clean... Oh, did I not... I need to Oh that's because my my machine crashed, I had to reboot, so let's start the containers. Alright, there we go. Alright, I'll run it. Cassandra MS SQL and all that junk. So then then we can do up. And Hellfire. So that crashed my VM. <laughs> That's, damn it. Give me a second. Starting back up. Yeah. True that. The selection definitely makes up for the... Uh, audio oddities right all right booting back up while I'm booting shout out to codebase alpha thanks for hosting same thing with everybody in the uh, coder group no op cat Sus, thanks James thanks for hosting man same to Robert Tables and Hinkle. Sushi Codes. Y'all rock. Thank you so much. All right. Almost, almost booted back up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I guess I need to look into what the hell is crapping my machine out here. Something about running all those containers at one time, because that's what crashed me earlier. Can I not log in now? Just not type my password. Oh, there we go. Oh, and the resolution's forked up again. Always use that to me. There we go. Okay. Let's get back in here. Oh wow, so many things to update. Oh. Well, we'll do we'll do the update in a little. can't believe a docker container can bring down a whole machine like that that seems kind of kind of crap well let's see here let's, we're, we're just going to work with postgres first let's work with postgres and get those migrations built first and then we'll move on to some of the other ones and get those running um, come on naya cat you can do it load the project Yeah, okay. So, start Cassandra. Let's make another one of these. Start. 
post grad school. There we go. Add that, please do. So this is Apache Cassandra, and this is post grad school. I am glad that I wrote the names of them in there. And also, what are the names of these things? Why am I still using those gooey looking identifiers? <clears throat> Dr. P.S. Oops, Dr. P.S. Paul. And do they, do they even have names? Oh, well. Let's just do, let's do this one. We'll do just Postgres, boom. All right, consys Postgres. So can I do like consys stop, I mean docker stop consys Postgres, and then I think I can start it again, right? Yeah? Yes, yeah, so why am I not using, let's choose that name. In here instead of that other stuff. That was not the smartest thing. There you go. All right. <clears throat> So let's do just start Sondra. Just start Postgres. Cursing Babu. Well, whatever. Okay. There we go. So now let's let's comment these out for now. Let's, we'll do the whole section. Boom. And down, comment that section out just for now. So that'll be our migrate. So with this, it also shows how much easier it is when you actually have the command running. So this is all I need. And then I can start adding stuff. <clears throat> all right, so with Postgres, we have our up, we have our down. So this is, we're not gonna use the tra to trains one. So let's actually, we're gonna migrate down. Um, let's, yeah, let's actually, create new stuff here. So now it's down. You do file 2019 uh, 03. What is today's date? It is the 28th. 28th. And then yes, I'm going to change to the bigger screen in just a second, by the way. Uh, create uh, tables up.sql. Change the dialog to Postgres. There we go. And then we're going to create another file called 2019 03 28 uh, drop tables down by SQL. And I'm going to nuke these. <sighs> Postgres. All right, so first create table is
Oh, I don't need that. I have them on my machine. Spacing. Oh, but it's in that weird, the weird Firefox directory. Let's go here. Oh, those are still there. That's good. And then add on purposes download. Really download. Uh, where the hell does Firefox put their downloads? Hey, Dave Free, thanks for the cheer. Boom. Oh, hell. Does anybody remember what that path was? Here, was it public? No. Was it... other stuff I'm doing I guess um and that's that coffee jump there I go what was it um I don't remember what it was called <laughs> Docs.google.com. Crappy browser, do your thing. Application diagrams. That's not what it is either. That's... Wow, what the hell is that? I don't even know. Uh, can I do by recent? Recent, yeah. There it is. And then I downloaded it somewhere. Right, so where the hell did they put it? Do they show all downloads? What is this path? Home, Adrian, Snap, Firefox, Common, Downloads. Oh, God. That Not super happy about that. It's kind of crappy. All right, here we go. So let's put that over in actual downloads here. And then we'll just, uh, right, this will open it with something, right? Oh, I don't want to open that. I just want to open it with something simple. We got nothing simple. Oh, maybe I should put it actually in the repo. Let's see here. Yeah, so HTML of it. Is that hmm? The PDF. What's that look like? Maybe we'll just use the PDF. Put that in there. Oh God, the PDF is opening in GIMP. Come on. Can't cancel. Let's do this. We'll do. Do this one. Wait, this is the crap one. This was the. There we go. Okay, we're going to take these. We'll take that draw.io thing too. Copy that. And we're going to go in here. Add in database migrations. Um, 
There we go. <clears throat> Diagrams. Yeah, let's add all that. Ah, perfect. There we go. Oh, of course, open the stupid thing again. PNG looks good there. There, I can work from that. How do I, let's split this split vertically. Yeah, all right, cool. So now, Ah, this is perfect, perfect. Good job, Golan. <clears throat> okay. So for our create tables, we need to do create table if not exists carriers. Um, I'm gonna case them like this. Let's go over to the database and use this thing to get some syntax. So we're doing Postgres first. This is it. Let's do refresh. All right, there we go. Schemas, can I do a new table? Yes, new table. Call it carriers. And then we need to create a key. Oh, here we go. Columns. This is your carrier ID. And it's not null. It is unique and it is primary key. Hmm. This will be a UID. Can I do that? Yep. Okay. I got it in there. Indexes, foreign keys, none of those yet. All right, we're gonna call him to his name, string, all right. Boy, can't remember my types. Bar car, text, I think. There we go, okay, so. Name will be Barcar, 100, default, no, um, not null. Uh, does it need to be unique? Mm, yes, it does technically. No, I'm not going to put that because what happens if it's a subsidiary and it needs to, yeah, we might have double snap. So that's good. And then let's create another. So we have a description. Text. Come on, what's the what's the big thing? Car, car, character, char, in car, real. I'm standing. There's got to be more than that. Come on, text. Come on, Postgres. Postgres school text. It says there's text, that's what I thought. Yeah, unlimited length, that's what I want. Okay, so let's just do this. Let's... Now that can be empty. We want to start. So that's the start of the company, end of the company if it's like closed. And it can be null, which will designate that it's still open. Site. Um, uh, so URI. What do we got here? Best data type in Postgres school for URI. What do they suggest? 
tend to be. Da, 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 da. Is there a specific type for it? Data types. Types, character types, binary, date time, boolean enumerated, geometric, network address types. I could just <laughs> store the IP. We could do lookup to store the IP. That would be kind of funny. There's UUID. Oh, does it even have? Oh, search types, that's cool. IPv6 IPv6 network address. Mm, I think I'm just gonna make it a text too. I think that's the safest thing. Do. Oh, yeah, it's not all that super useful there. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna go with that text. Uh, assume that they might not have a site. And then what's the other thing? Oh yeah, Wikipedia. That'll be text too. Comments don't want comments. No. Let's here execute that sucker. And it looks like it's in there. Yep. Oh, that looks good. So, and oh, there's the indexes. So then let's do a generate on that data source. DDL source. What does that generate for? Me? Oh, nothing. Whatever. So there's SQL scripts. SQL generator and bloom. Yes, that is what I want. All right, so our tables now. Damn it! Come on, stop messing around. Create table. Create table if not exists. Carriers. And that can go away. Clicked it. Okay, whatever. Just do everything in case, because you're having a fit. That's not, it's not a typo. Come on. Let's add this to the dictionary. Can I add it to the dictionary? No, of course not. Heaven forbid you can add it to the dictionary. Show sure changes as UML. I'm dying, cat. Show me this UML. What is this? Oh, I don't. Whatever. Okay, yep, that looks good. So, as a starting point, I'll do this. And we'll drop this table. Drop carriers, yep. And I can get that one into down. So now we can migrate up. What? Oh. Oh, that's going to be weird. So let's do. And the company start. So let's try 
try that. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. So now if I refresh, should have the table. Yes. And migration one. Let's take a look at that. Can I just do a console? Here with the consoles. Jump to console. Yes. What? Why trains? You crack. Crackhead. Try that again. Jump to console. New console. Okay, yeah. So select asterisk from carriers. Right? Yep. Boom. Sweet. Okay. Now let's do insert blah to carriers. I don't remember how to do an insert statement now. So SQL script source that it generates SQL region script and with strings compared to that. New table, new the next column, to the schema. Update the file. Nope. Ah, oh. well, we'll just do it like the old fashioned way I looked up in the docs. This is, I'm gonna build it so that we have our default data too. This is not something you would always do, but I am gonna do it with this one. Because there's some stuff that's just gonna be default data, period. Site description name copy in and start carrier ID. Okay, so that covered the basics, I guess. Um, now let's get that data in there. So that's carrier ID. I mean, yeah, and then start copy in name description Wikipedia. All right, what is the OSGRAS will generate UID. Oops, UID. Yeah, UID. We do a V4 one, right? This? Is that the function? Makes me wonder though, can I do mm. I'm not gonna do that right now. We are going to try to do that. 
I don't think it works that way. We'll call it and see what we do. Um, function unknown. Alright, for now, to keep moving forward and not get stuck fiddling with that. Um, so here, generate UID. Let's create three. There we go. And then, come in here, kind of move out for now. Let's take this one and get it in here. And company start. Let's let's list Amtrak first. So company end day. This is gonna be no name is going to be Amtrak, um, description, America's, I do that? America's, I do this, ah, let's look that up too, Close. SQL, SQL, escape, single quote. Oh, oh or the backslash. Yeah, just try to do that. Take this. That didn't look right. There we go, okay. And the site is Amtrak.com. No, 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 Wikipedia page. Uh-oh. Oh, weird. Just lost my mouse here. I mean, obviously you can see my mouse, but I can't click on anything. I can still type. Well, we're gonna try to type this like this then. So. So I lost the mouse, just gonna use the keyboard, I guess. All right, and then company start. Let's see here, I'm track. Founded in 1971 as a quasi-public corporation, blah, 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 May 1st, 1971. So what is that? That's 5, 1, uh, 1971. Um, I don't know if that will save as a date, <laughs> but we'll see. So then, okay, I gotta close this and get my mouse back because I don't. Did that just click? Ah, so Golan had my mouse stuck or something. Ugh, freaking weird. Yeah, hadn't seen that issue before. Put, 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 put. All right. Bringing everything back up where it was. Okay, let's give this a run now. Insert. What happened? Did nothing happen?
Um, let's get a console here. New console. Select asterisks from carriers. Okay, nothing there. So let's get rid of this. Let's just run this puppy. Why is it not running? Happened to my running. Let's do this thing. Okay, so did that get it in there? Yeah, I put it in there. Okay. Okay, so that's the up. So let's see if we can get migrate up and down or not. So down, we'll wipe out that one. All right. So I wiped out here, so this should put it back. Oh, damn it, the down didn't work. Oh, because it's named funky. I'm gonna fix that, let's your show files. Oh, let's fix the down. Oh, well, that's what I did, and maybe that messes it up. I don't know. Yeah, it might have done it. So, show files again. Create tables up and then drop tables down. Let's add that to our repo here. Okay, so down. Oh, you and your scheme of crap. So migrate up. All right, and migrate down. Okay, migrate up again. If we refresh that, we should have the record in there now too. I don't know where all these mythical open things are. Yep, there we go. All right, cool. So let's go in here and add the other two values real quick, in, or the other two records. So we now need, we need the stinking ID for the other ones. So we'll add those, let's see here, Alaska, Railroad, and then what is it, oh yeah, Bright Line. Railroad. So there's Alaska Railroad. And then this, okay. And we need generate UID. I just want two, two more of them. Oh, whoops, S is not a number. There we go. So this one is going to be for this one. This one's going to be for the other one. Brightline started for service January 13, 2018. Oh wow, January 13, 2018. Mm 
and we'll just leave it as bright line for right now. Actually, we'll do version like this. by virtual trend, virtual rail group. So is it gonna be called that? I mean it's all from FEC though. Eh, whatever. Extra late trains for biggest weekend of EDM. Cool beans. What is this? Crap. Oh that's the little transit stuff in there. Connected transit. Well they finally added a bunch of stuff to their site. That's cool. that in there. All right, now let's get Alaska. Alaska Railroad. And then we'll get the Wikipedia page. All right, let's, I guess this is like Alaskan Railroad. Passenger and freight services. Opened in 1914. Let's hear what day, year did Alaska Railroad open? I'm sure that's somewhere. Uh, we need to found in 1902. So, founded in 1902, opened in 1914. And here it says 1903, a company called Alaska Central Railroad began building a line in Seward near the Kenai Peninsula. Pen Peninsula. Went into receivership. Okay, so it tanked by 1909. Three passengers, freight mail, the returning alarm, to the. The government came in and did that, and then another one, Tanana or Valley Railroad came in. Okay, right, but what about proposed um, connection to the contiguous states? That'll never happen. <laughs> That'll never happen at this point. There's all that. That's cool. And well, there's this, the routes. That's uh, super cool too. But, oh, what the hell. I don't know, I guess I'll just go with uh, 1914. That, that sounds good, whatever. We'll go with 1914. Oh, and how would that store, I wonder? 1914. Well, we'll just say one, one 1914. For now, figure out how to fix it later. What's it actually called? Just Alaska Railroad. Alaska Railroad. All right, that looks good. We have three now, so let's migrate down. Boom. And then we'll migrate up. Boom. And then, let's take a look at this. Select from carriers. There we go, all three of them. Sweet. Now let's add one though that, uh, let's add one that's, that's dead. Just for good measure in the future. So we'll do uh, insert into carriers. Oops, here I'm doing it hard, I just add all of them. Okay. UUID. And then what I'm going to actually add is Southern Railways. Oh, not that one though. 
Yeah, US, there we go. Yeah, there it is. SOU 1894 to 1982. Foreign War became the Southern Railroad in 1894. Wow, nearly 150 predecessor lines. Operated 6,000 miles. Richmond, New York. Oh, that's interesting. I just want to say, turn to 1827. There's the 1895 map, 1921 map. Hmm. I know it became part of Norfolk Southern. Because they're beautiful streamliners. All right, so. going to go with the dates here. So 82, 1894 to 1982. We'll say 11-1-1-1982. And I need that UUID. Southern Railway. Hmm. Somewhere. So I think it actually became the Norfolk Southern. I don't think it got like purchased into or whatever. I think it became the. Maybe it did get bought into it. I don't know how that actually worked. But anyway, let's hear it. 79, Chessie system. Oh, so it's, it's a merger. Yeah. Right. And then more Conrail 99. And yeah, they sure don't have dates for this stuff. You can see all the different passenger rails here. Passenger trains, I mean. Just, that's the named ones. They had tons of other ones for a while. Well, Hall actually ran it at the end. That's kind of interesting to me, since that's my last name. All right. What Queen and Crescent on the, oh, not the Crescent. Roads and why why does no one have dates on this stuff? Southern Railway Merger date. Who invented the train of year? Okay, whatever. Well, but that's insane. Oh yeah, nine thousand pages of this stuff. So that's Norfolk Southern. That's what it became. Environmental record, cumulative current trackage. Oh, bibliography. Would that be it? Nope. Of course not. That's a corridor. That's a new build out they're doing. Uh, uh, there we go. So the systems here. Let's chart 1894. June 1. So that's 6 1 Okay. 6 1. Two Southern Railway. And of course, this is null. It doesn't even exist anymore. And then let's 
get the Wikipedia page in there and we'll call it a day on that. Move on to some next steps here. Cool. Okay, so now down. That's good. And then up. Yeah, sweet. That one is that one is out of business and in the show. So now if we run this, we can say where company end is null. Is that how you do it? I don't know. Right, freaking sequel. <laughs> Spaces. Oh, is it is? Haha! -ha! And then of course it is not at all. There we go. So now we can pick out the differentiation there. So then the next step here, that is for that table. And then we want to create another table. Which, oh, let's pull up our image. And let's split vertically again. We'll need to do two this time. Let's do. Actually, what's the one that's standalone? Let's do depots. Depots. And then we'll have. Oh, I didn't mark. I didn't put that. Oh, I don't need a stop ID in there. Okay, well, anyway. Depots. And then we got depot ID. It's not no primary key unique. New ID again. And let's get in main bar uh, char hundred. No. Code do six, I think. Because that's like the airport code. We'll have open date. Have closed date. It'll be nullable. <clears throat> and description that can be knowable, and then owner. I'm not really sure what that field will look like just yet, but let's do this. We'll get out of there, and then let's create a new file, and we'll call it 2019 03. 28 create depose.sql up.sql
So in this, actually let's, let's do this and then add it to Postgres. Now usually the way this works is um, you don't really have two run per day. You have one file per day. So like since I had, had these dates like this, I'm gonna say that these were past dates. So let's say initial create tables is gonna say it's gonna be let's say I did this yesterday. And then the drop tables there. It's gonna be yesterday. There we go. And now we want to have new file. And that is going to be 20, no, oops, 2019, um, 03, 28, dot, uh, drop, compose, dot, down, dot, sequel. All right. So these are going to, they need to be dated accordingly because the software should run them in order, right? The migration software. Uh, but we'll see if that actually works here in just a minute. Postgres goal, there we go. Now let's put it in the create. Yeah, okay, cool. That looks good. And should be able to run that, no change. What? What a bunch of silly nonsense. Oh, and then down. Drop, table, depose. How do I not have? Oh, that's right. Let's change the file name. Great. Oh, boom. It's going to be beautiful. Yep, depots and carriers. Perfect. And then this should have, of course, a jump to console. Sure, let's do that one. Run it, and voila, data is back in it just as we expected. Everything is beautiful. Now let's do down. Oh. Refresh. And it should be all gone. Sweet. So that is our initial uh, schemas set up. So I will, I'm gonna continue working on those for a few minutes, but let's talk about something else unrelated at the moment. Um, Let's, let's get these committed first, so we'll commit those out in the repo. Latest diagram work and initial table creation for the database. Get this sucker done yet. Did that even do the push? I don't know if that did the push. Find out in a minute. What, what's my warnings? Neighbor resolve table carriers. Well, yeah, okay, whatever. Error, UI is not registered. Oh, okay. Then it's not allowed there. Language. 
Okay, there's no locally sort library for HTTP. Mm. Guess we don't really need this thing then. We don't really need the draw IO thing. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Um I guess I do need to fix that table though. Let's go ahead and commit that. And then we'll commit and push. Excellent. So that should be out there now. And y'all can go check it out, issue a pull request, you know, whatever you want to do. Jump into that project if you want to. Consist builder. I'll do it. Oh, bear with me. I'm gonna do a login real quick. It'll just take a second. Okay, almost, almost. Almost, what? What is it doing? What is it doing? Oh my god. Oh, here we go, here we go. All right. Uh, where is that stupid repo? <laughs> that took way too long. It was amazing. It took like 5,000 hours to type in that damn thing. Consist, oh, consist migrations? Is that what I'm putting it in? That's not what I'm putting it in. What is this? What is it? Terminal get remote. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, I guess it is only that many lines, right? When well, it thinks it's a shell program because I have written no go. That's that's the go in the project. But anyway, it's all in the directory here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, feel free to issue some issues. Let's do this though. Let's. Let's go up here. Trans no, that's not what I want. Where's the? Oh yeah, set up templates. It's your bug report, and then we'll do feature request, post changes. Sure, commit that because I'm me and I own the repo. And then 
Yeah, that looks good. Cool. All right, and then go back into settings, and I'm going to get rid of the wiki. Don't really need that. Um, don't really need that because we have wiki, and we're not doing projects. Currently, we're currently not doing projects. All of everything is kept out on Trello.com, and then oh, let me let me find the repo path real quick. Trello. Here we go. Threshing code projects. Oh, now my cut and paste don't work either. Damn it. B one B X S O S U A slash thrashing code projects. There we go. And that is the current awesome bits where I'm keeping track of everything, really. Um this is the only thing that has its own separate repo is the vid track vid vid hacking vid stream hacking repo. Um, everything else is in here, and I'll track it in here unless somebody wants to jump in and join me here. Then we'll start doing uh, more issues because someone will have logged an issue. But otherwise, I get rid of the old projects and other junk in there. Don't need it. Uh, and all that's in there. All right, so we're good. And that is good for now. Sweet. And then, all right, what is all this crap? Oh, let's just update all that stuff. All right, and with that, let's see, who can we raid? Who else is out there fiddling right now? Um. That is the question. All right, who we got here? Let's hear. So with that, I'm actually going to log out for the evening. I thank everybody for watching. Uh, check you next time. We'll do more database migrations and get some other code working on some other things, including diving into some of the Twits data migrations that I've been doing around pulling Twitter, uh, Twitter junk and then pulling it into the database and Apache Cassandra and stuff like that. Also have a lot more Terraform and some other cool bits coming up in the very near future. So. Y'all have a most excellent day. Um, in the meantime, here is the awesome outro that I created for everybody. Cheers.